Hi everybody, welcome back to my series of videos on civil drawing. In the last video, we have seen the best procedure to create a wall layout. In this video, we will create steps. Creating a step involves simple procedure and you can see the step here. But before we create a step, it will be better if we know the theory behind steps and if we can get an understanding about the various dimensions that are to be given to create the steps in two dimension as well as in 3D when you explore the 3D steps in future. Now I would like to take you to the basics. Steps are basically used to reach on to the floor level from the ground level. Hence the number of steps depends on the height of the floor level or you can say the height of the plinth. Let's see this illustration. Here the floor level is at a height of 45 cm from the ground level. So we obviously need three steps to reach onto the floor level from the ground level. Now let's analyze each step. Each step has got a rise and a tread. And this is a separate illustration of steps. Here this particular height is called the rise. And this distance is called the tread. The rise is 15 cm and the tread is 30 cm. And there is also another feature that is given to the step which is called nosing which is this small projection. And the dimension of the nosing is 2.5 by 2.5 and this projection can be sometimes 2.5 and it can go up to 3.3 which depends on our requirement. From this it's clear that the number of steps it depends on the height of the floor level. That means clearly there are two levels we have a ground level and a floor level. But there are other levels as well in a civil drawing. Once you get familiarized with the different levels in a civil drawing it will be easy for you to create elevations and sections. So I would like to give you an idea about the different levels in a civil drawing and this illustration shows the different levels. We have the ground level which is treated as a zero level. On the top of the ground level we have the plinth level which is nothing but the floor level and the floor level will be generally at 45 to 90 centimeter and it varies at an increment of 15 centimeters because each step height is 15 centimeter. Then there is another level called sill level which is nothing but at the bottom most level of a window and the sill level depends on the height of the window. I'll introduce different types of windows with dimensions when we talk about windows in the forthcoming tutorial. And here we have a lintel level which is generally kept at 210 centimeter to 240. For residential buildings it is 210 and for commercial buildings it might sometimes go up to 240. And what is lintel level? At the top of the window there is a beam running and this beam is called a lintel beam. And let's see another illustration. This photograph is taken from a construction site and this particular beam is called the lintel beam and it is generally kept at a height of 210 centimeter. And this beam is supported by two pillars here. And this particular beam carries the load of the brickwork above the lintel level. And so that's the idea about the lintel beam. On the top of the lintel level we have the roof level which is generally kept at 300 centimeter or 3 meter and it can go up to 360 centimeter for commercial buildings or for large structures. Then we have another level called parapet level for residences with flat roofing and the parapet level or the height of the parapet will be from 90 centimeter to 150 centimeter that depends on the height of the structure. If it is a multi-storied apartment and for higher floors the parapet of the balcony can go up to 150 but for a single storey structure it can be around 90 centimeter or even 1 meter. Now let's create the steps. When you take a view from the top you can see that each rise will appear like a horizontal line. So this is one rise, another one and one more rise. And this level is the floor level. So we need to create only these three horizontal lines. Now let's come back to the plan. When you look at the steps you can see that it covers the entire door width. Then we can take one wall thickness leftward and rightward. So this is 1 meter and this is 24 which is wall thickness and 24 another wall thickness. So 48 plus 1 meter so it is 148. So I'll make a rectangle. First corner I'll click here. Then I'll go to dimension option and the length of the rectangle is 148 and the width of the rectangle is equivalent to two treads which is 30 plus 30 60. Then I'll click to define the opposite corner point. Then I'll draw another line connecting these two midpoints which indicates another rise. Now let's just take a copy of it and I'll keep it here. 
because we need one more steps on the back side then I'll move this step with this as the base point when I master key the second point I'll just shift right click and I'll choose mid between two points and I'll take this end point as well as this end point so it is inserted exactly at the right location and this door width is 75 centimeter so we have to reduce the width of the step by 25 centimeter so I'll give stretch command then I'll select the objects to be stretched using a crossing window by dragging the mouse leftward and I'll click to define my base point here then I keep the cursor in the leftward direction then I'll give a distance of 25 now the width of the step is reduced by 25 centimeter now I'll move this step with this as a base point when I master key the second point I'll select shift right click and mid between this point as well as this point now it is inserted at the right location so this is how you create steps in a civil plan drawing and I hope you have learned some core concepts and theory behind creating steps you also have got an exposure in different levels in a building in the next tutorial we will insert doors and windows at respective locations please don't forget to hit the like button of this video if you really liked it and subscribe to my channel SabirCAD where AutoCAD learning is made easy. Until we meet again, bye for now and thanks for your time.